begin with there is a charged particle which enters a region in which there is a frictional force proportional to particle's speed so basically there is a drag force acting on this particle right so it was observed that the particle travels for 10 cm let me call this distance as s0 and according to the diagram this is the distance s0 i mean it started from this point i it ended up here final first and the distance it traveled is s0 right now remember i have taken gravity in the cross direction in this problem and between the particle and the table there is drag force and drag in this problem drag in this problem is somewhat like minus kv vector ठीक है now second time what happens now he repeats the experiment this time there is a homogeneous magnetic field also which is present perpendicular to the plane of the trajectory in the cross direction and let's say that the field is b now he has observed that if he throws the particle again the particle follows a different trajectory and stops at some point whose distance from the starting point is 6 cm call this distance s1 so basically this line this line has got a length of s1 right and now for the third time again he throws the particle here but now the magnetic field has been made to be it follows a third trajectory which is similar to the second one but not the same and it stops at a point whose displacement from the starting point is s2 the question is nothing is given only s0 is given s1 is given can we find out if the given terms are s0 s1 can we find out the expression of s2 can we find out the expression of s2 in terms of s0 and s1 that is a problem and uh, remember i don't want to derive the complete equation i want to look into the pattern and comment on the answer what i'm trying to say is if you look into the three steps let's say i observe the step 1 of the problem step 1 and just look into the impulse equation directly so what you could have said is in the first case if you throw this particle with u not the the impulse that you will get is minus k into v dt and uh, integral of this term should be the change in momentum from i to f and that will be minus mu not so we understand we understand this distance is s not integral v dt so basically k s not upon m that is coming out as u not that is my first equation now let us start the problem leave these basic things now think about the problem careful actually there is a very nice observation the observation is for path 2 or 3 if i go to a general location we understand that the force which is acting is q v cross b so there is a q v cross b term and there is a minus k v term that is acting multiply this equation by dt multiply this by dt that will give me a dp term here dp now try to observe carefully if you multiply this term dt with both the terms this dt will come here in this expression this becomes q into ds vector cross b and minus k v dt becomes ds and that becomes your dp basically dp is this right i have taken this dt scalar with this beta and now just i thought upon taking integral so i think everybody was clear that minus the final momentum is zero so minus m u not i cap this is q times don't bother about this term this is q times s vector cross b the total displacement because q and b are constants and this will become minus k times s vector this is my main equation which holds for step 2 step 2 this is the equation 
the problem is if if now i start explaining or expressing all the terms in terms of i j k and then i start solving it will be a very lengthy exercise which is not required there now comes the important point in this problem because i knew that only s0 and s1 are given and i had to calculate s2 what i should have done at in this step at this step should be i should take the dot of this equation and product of this equation with the same equation so the term that i am getting now is minus me not i cap dot minus me not so i am having observe i am having a m square u not square term lhs now just be very careful with rhs what you will get so these are the two vectors and dotted with the same one now expand the term so one term that i will get is minus ks so i will have a k square s dot s s square term right i will also have in rhs i will also have a q s cross b dot k s term and now very obvious baat hai that um, s cross b is perpendicular to s so when you will take the dot product with s it will become zero so q s cross b dot k s zero k s dot q s cross b that is also zero so the only term left is q s cross b dot q s cross b so basically i have q square s vector s vector cross b vector the mod square that's what i'll have so basically my equation becomes m square u not square is it is equal to k square s square plus the second term is q square now s cross b mod square so that is s square b square and remember whatever is my displacement vector that is perpendicular to b so i'll have that sin 90 term this is my general equation now because if this is my this was my first equation right here i have got my second equation just i have to divide this second equation by k square if i divide this equation by k square k square here remember k is also not given and k square term i also take here so lhs becomes m square u not square by k square so basically s not square becomes equal to s square plus whatever term you are having which is i mean q square b square s square by k square now let me do one thing because i have written the second equation i know b is b and i am substituting s as s1 s1 here and symmetrically when i will try to write my third equation it will become s not square now s term will become s2 so i'll have a s2 square term and now b has become 2b 2b so it is q square 4b square s2 square s2 square divided by k square now you understand because q b and k are not given so you have to appropriately arrange so i am writing my final answer what i will do i will take s not and s1 on one side so s not square minus s1 square on one side divided by s1 square should be equal to the second term that i will write is s not square minus s2 square and i will divide this complete equation by 4s2 square that is 4s2 square now observe this equation very very carefully aap band kar dijiye ka gate bahar se band kar dijiye this is the key equation and through this equation the only unknown of the problem s2 can be directly solved you remember i have not written the basic ax ay generally while solving such problems students 
either try to get the answer directly through impulse but if you observe this mechanism i have never used the vector equation and i have completely focused on the data so the only hitch here was if you take the dot product with the equation then you will get the scalar format of the equation and the magnitudes of displacement will be involved here as not as one given as two can be easily at minute so that this was the point and i think all of you will get the answer to the problem the second problem in order was question number 166 again it's a very nicely built up problem which is based on the focult pendulum uh where the concept of magnetic force has been used just uh, read the data of the problem carefully and uh, we will analyze it the question says there is a small ball of mass m right and uh, this ball is carrying a charge of positive charge of q and it is suspended by an insulating string of length l the pendulum so form is placed at rest in a homogeneous so this is interesting it is placed at rest in a homogeneous vertical magnetic field of strength v now the experiments have proved that if the ball is initially knocked matlab aap kya karo to take this pendulum and try to provide it a flick so if magnetic field was not present it will oscillate simple uh, simple pendulum but if there is a vertical magnetic field not only will it oscillate the plane of oscillation will also rotate not only will the particle oscillate the plane of oscillation will also rotate and that is why he is saying i mean we have to justify why this is happening how is it rotating and then comes the actual question for j advanced how long does it take for the plane which is rotating to make one complete revolution very beautiful problem written by nadig and we have to observe it very the solution is even very different so just stay with the problem so it is oscillating like this and there is a plane of oscillation and the plane will rotate now let's see how what exactly is happening so let me and all the assumptions of uh, small angle are valid to make this problem symmetric with angular shm for small theta so to begin with what has happened this guy is there iske paas q charge hai the mass m gravity is present g the length of the pendulum is l maybe a magnetic field comes into picture so let it oscillate no issue now tell me if this guy is oscillating and i do have a magnetic field b right and i reach this position here right now because of v cross b if it is going away with b v cross b will also exert a force which is in the cross direction so the problem now is that there is gravity which is providing me torque restoring torque and there is this v cross b which is trying to push my plane inwards now one thing is clear that there is one force magnetic force which will always try to change the plane of motion of the charged particle charged particle would otherwise would have been in a vertical plane but that plane itself will rotate because of the presence of magnetic field we understood this point somebody said he said what is the fundamental equation which is governing the motion of this particle so if i look into that fundamental equation what are the terms i am having i think mass of the particle is in acceleration is let's say dv by dt so i'm i'm observing this motion that should be equal to q v cross b this force will act q v cross b always and there will be one centrifugal term i mean it seems like there will be one term which is minus 
एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर आर वेक्टर देर विल बी दिस टर्म विच इज एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर आर टर्म सो बेसिकली एम राइटिंग दैट टर्म माइनस एम ओमेगा स्क्वायर आर वेक्टर इट्स अंडरस्टैंड दैट टू बिगिन विथ इट वॉज ऑसिलेटिंग इन दैट वर्टिकल प्लेन एंड ओमेगा का वैल्यू रूट जी बाय एल था एंड एवरी एट एवरी इंस्टेंस जो टेंशन लग रहा था इसके ऊपर टेंशन वॉज बींग बैलेंस्ड बाय दिस फोर्स ना आई मीन द हॉरिजोंटल कंपोनेंट सो बेसिकली वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से दिस ओमेगा टू बिगिन विथ वॉज रूट ऑफ जी बाय एल एंड देर वॉज दिस फोर्स विच वॉज एक्टिंग सो आई रिटर्न दिस टर्म सो प्रैक्टिकली दैट T which was prevalent, that mg term which was prevalent, the resultant of those T and mg are inculcated in this minus m omega square r. So try to understand that this, these are the two real forces. Other than this, which I have written through this expression, m omega square r can get it right. Now, the problem is, how can we solve this equation or this differential equation to obtain my final result? now comes the important part of the problem now what will i do for a moment i will leave this combination as such and i will discuss another mechanical situation which is absolutely similar in terms of vector equation with the situation in hand so what is that situation now that's why i use that term focal pendulum what was that situation so for, forget the name focal pendulum observe the situation the situation is you take this uh, pendulum which is oscillating forget this question and think about a new question now take a pendulum which is oscillating there is no magnetic field now do one thing you start observing this pendulum from a rotating frame of reference which is himself rotating with a angular velocity about this axis so if if this is my pendulum in the new situation right and this is the axis and i am myself rotating with a angular velocity i'm using a new omega omega vector about the axis then what will i observe now because i am coming outward i'm i'm spinning with this angular velocity omega i will observe that this pendulum has got a anti capital omega vector basically in this motion there was no change of plane of motion but i hypothetically generated that situation because i started spinning myself in a direction which is outward with a angular velocity omega vector so i observed a anti omega for this particle and now when i observe that what is the equation i will write for this particle so i thought again if the particle is having a mass of m in this hypothetical situation why i am generating this hypothetical situation because then the mechanics of this uh, hypothetical situation will be known to me and i will map that situation with the given situation and problem will become simple i will also tell you the thought process through which i realized that i should do that you are understanding one thing that why i would have rotated with omega outward because i wanted to provide it nt omega which is similar to the motion because of v cross b one thing is very simple so now what i should have written i would have written mass into acceleration term again dv by dt now let's see in rhs what are the terms i will write for that particle so the first term that comes to our mind is the coriolis term so the coriolis force term will be minus 2m it is minus 2m right it is m into minus 2 omega vector cross v rel vector and that term will become v now so i mean this term as such becomes twice of m omega vector i mean if you have taken that minus term separately so you'll have that v vector v vector cross capital omega vector tau ab you are likhenge so 2m v cross omega will come then comes the real force term so i am using the one term which is minus m 
omega naught square into r vector try to understand that this term represents the real force the real force which was present in the problem when it had angular frequency omega naught quite similar to what i have written here that term is again present here only thing is that angular frequency in that problem was omega here it may have a different value let us see whether it gets the same value or not that term i have taken as omega naught and the th third force will come because of the centrifugal thrust and that is that is m capital omega square into r vector if you observe carefully we'll have a m capital omega square into r vector let me repeat what are the three terms that i have written here while writing mass into acceleration this is let's say my equation number 2 while writing mass into acceleration i have written all the real forces those real forces because actually i am rotating with omega na that's why i am writing two extra term otherwise the real forces are only minus m omega not square r vector and these two imaginary forces are we have studied them the coriolis term and the centrifugal term now the question should be done by comparison of these two situations compare these two situations think that what you have done here in terms of capital omega makes this equation absolutely identical with what is happening here how come check here it seems like after comparison that 2m omega vector is resembling your q b vector q b vector i am interested in the mod of this term so my omega mod comes out as q b by twice of m that is the first thing that comes up here first thing and also the second star equation that i can write is uh, minus m so basically minus mr so omega square here will become omega not square minus omega not square minus capital omega square so i said this thing categorically what is required is omega not omega not comes out as plus minus root of small omega square plus capital omega square negative is not possible so basically root of remember this small omega square term is g by l and this capital omega square is q square b square by 4m square examiner can definitely ask uh this value of omega not also in the problem and now and other than that if i just observe his question his question was simply how long does it take for the plane to make one complete revolution now because you are rotating with capital omega right so you can you can see the the time that it will take for complete uh, the answer should be 2 pi by capital omega and we have categorically calculated capital omega so it seems to be 2 pi by q b by twice of m so basically it comes out as 4 pi m upon q b as far as the answer to the question is concerned that will come out as 4 pi small m by q into b and uh, if you look into that uh, omega not omega not is the actual angular frequency of pendulum in the actual situation you understood that this capital omega was just a mechanical method of you know co converting this simple pendulum problem observed from a rotating frame of reference to a problem where there is no change of frame of reference rather in the practical situation there was a pendulum along with the magnetic field which is similar to this question and because this question was very straight forward for me by writing two additional virtual forces i just mapped the real force equation here and here and by comparison i got that omega that was required also no that was the only requirement and how come this idea comes here so the idea was very obvious that there are there is one oscillation 
and one into the plane motion which depends upon this term now into the plane motion perpendicular to the velocity is very similar to the term of coriolis force that's what it does coriolis deflection is symmetric i mean sideway deflection which is happening and the proportionality with velocity was also the same so it was very similar in in uh, physically so this is the easiest way of mapping this problem and using that result because already i know the value of omega omega not is only a no in a multi correct they can put up a question where they can ask omega not which we can find out here and even if they ask the time that it will take that can also be depicted so whenever you are solving problems where this term q v cross b is coming and rotation is happening twice i mean rotate ho raha and again rotation of the plane in which it is revolving you should think in terms of coriolis if you can map your magnetic field to some coriolis term then the problem may become easy so that was the core idea of the problem uh the problem says that uh, you can read it this problem investigates the motion of two electrons that are moving in a plane perpendicular to the field lines of a homogeneous magnetic field the electrons are considered classical point masses fine affected only by electric and magnetic forces now the first part of the question a standard j problem the two electrons initially at rest are at a distance small d then they are given initial velocities of identical magnitudes but opposite direction तो आपको ये बताना है वट इज द कंडीशन ऑन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दम इन द सब्सिक्वेंट मोशन इफ द सेपरेशन बिटवीन द पार्टिकल्स हैज टू रिमेन कॉन्स्टेंट एंड यू नीड टू डिराइव फॉर द एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ वी ऑल्सो सो लेट मी टेक ग्रेविटी फ्री स्पेस एंड लेट मी टेक दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स माइनस ई माइनस ई कैप्ट एट सम डिस्टेंस डी and these guys are to be provided with velocities in the opposite direction now uh, and there's a magnetic field also so first thing that comes to my mind let's presume magnetic field let's say magnetic field is in the cross direction b remember one thing carefully when in problems on magnetic field or magnetic force you make statements on center of mass you have to be careful because there is this external b which is coming now and the generator of that field some moving charge is not a part of the system that is not a part of system so it cannot be called upon as a closed system with magnetic forces being internal it cannot be called upon like that so what should i do then ठीक है इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक इंट्रैक्शन इज फाइन सो दे विल रेपल विद एफ ई एफ ई दैट वाज फाइन वन थिंग दैट कम्स टू माय माइंड सिंपलेस्ट थिंग इफ दे हैव टू हैव दैट कांस्टेंट डिस्टेंस एंड बी इज लाइक दिस सो आई थिंक इफ इफ आई प्रोवाइड वेलोसिटीज व्हिच इज परपेंडिकुलर टू द लाइन जॉइनिंग देम इन अ एप्रोप्रिएट मैनर सच दैट that force comes inwards if i can generate fm andar ki taraf fm here also i may it may serve the purpose so let me take that v up and let me take a symmetric v down so we cross p term and charge is negative so as far as this problem is concerned if i make my fm minus fe as uh, m ya uh, dekho ya m is the mass of electron so m into v square upon d by 2 my first equation where fm fm is e v b stay with the problem it's a the second part is very nicely built up and it will take lot of uh, ideas to sort it out this was the starting part or ye to theek hi hai it will become k electrostatic into e square divided by this as far as this part is concerned it is a quadratic solve this 
quadratic in V. Solve this quadratic in V. So let's see. It is E V by B minus K E square upon D square. And uh, that is 2 M E V square divided by D. So what happened? Let me multiply. So E V D square minus K E square B is equal to 2 M E V square D D D B. So what happened? 2 M E D D V square minus E D square D plus K E square B that comes out as 0. And now there are a few things that come to my mind. If I make that discriminant, I mean, it is E square D4 greater than or equal to 4 into 2 M E D B into K E square B. So if you solve this equation, that D comes out to be greater than or equal to solve it. It comes out as cube root of 8 m k upon b square. It is cube root of 8 k into m term, m e term or m term divided by b square. Now, the point is, what is the value of uh, d min? So the condition on D is this. This is the minimum D at which they can be kept. And remember, uh, I mean, it is possible that if you have anything less than this D, then you can't even find out any velocity with which you can, you can sus sustain this situation. You can't. It is not possible for the particles to stay at a constant distance. But uh, other than this D, if you take any value of D, for every d, you will have two possible v values. In the same direction, there are two possible v's. I mean, any value you can throw with, and it will move on a circular path. So, and he said, what is the expression of v? I have already said, you give me d, I will give you v. So, v is the root of this equation, and there are two possible v's. So, two possible v's. Fine. Now comes the actual problem. Now what he wanted in the B part of the problem, the, the important combination, here he was clear. He said, I want to keep one particle at rest and I want to throw the other one. And I'm more interested in the analysis of the problem. Just read it carefully. He said, show that. Now we will start it from scratch. It is again possible to maintain a constant separation if only agar ek electron ko velocity do or ek ko do hi nahi, still it is possible to maintain a constant separation d. This is something that we have to prove. And if this happens, what is the trajectory of the center of mass of the system in this case? Remember, uh, in the previous problem, the center of mass stayed at rest. The only reason there was the external magnetic field is applying the two magnetic forces in such a way that it stays at rest. But that is not a general result. Although generally, I would not have said that, but that was a special combination. Now, here, if you have to maintain distance, the question setter is saying, that center of mass won't stay at rest, it will follow some trajectory, derive the equation of the trajectory. So that is the second thing. And the third thing again is, what is the minimal distance that is necessary to realize this kind of motion? Last way, it is a qualitative problem. He also said that sketch the trajectories of electron in that case. And uh, also tell me, very interesting, last problem, when will the initially moving electron Stop for the first time. So lengthy problem, I will go step by step to solve this problem.
first of all let us try to understand that if these two people are kept at positions r1 and r2 let's say let's say i'm randomly solving it if this was my origin i have one guy kept at a position vector r1 the other person you have to stay with the problem because the final result is very nice so i need to derive that first so maybe uh, minus e one electron here one was here and there is a magnetic field also uh, b yeah. vector which is perpendicular to the plane the same idea so if you want to write the general equation for particle 1 and for particle 2 what will i say now i am using m so m into a1 as into acceleration of particle 1 is a electrostatic repulsion between them and q v cross p Now remember that Q V cross B is minus E tau times V vector cross B vector for the first particle. Call it V one. And what about that force between them? So it is K E square upon R Q. So that is R one vector minus R two vector the mod Q into uh, check what is the direction. Repulsion is this, so R one vector minus R two vector K E square upon R one minus R two mod Q R one vector minus R two vector and uh, Q V cross B and Q term there was minus E. Now try to observe that if you write the same equation. for the second particle there the terms that i'll have is this term will be symmetric with a r2 minus r1 here and here i'll have q velocity will be different which is v2 vector and we we'll cross this with b these are the two equations of i mean these two terms here q v cross b q v cross b this constant is fine same k e square upon r1 vector minus r2 vector mod whole q remember remember because now as both of them are having the same masses the cent the r coordinate the position vector of center of mass is always r1 plus r2 by 2 few things i can write i also know their vcm always because he has said find the trajectory of center of mass so now i am coming to the core idea it is v1 plus v2 by 2 i think all of you can understand this point that so much of problem is coming because of magnetic field otherwise generally uh, if the person who is generating field and the person on whom it is being acted upon are a part of system then the force will cancel but here it is not the case because the generator b is outside the system that is where the problem lies and if somebody simply puts up the question will matlab i cannot make direct comment that's why i have to go through all this so i know this thing that acm was equal to a1 vector plus a2 vector divided by 2 and here this term will be simple because now if you add these two equations check check this term will cancel so basically in this equation m into a1 plus a2 actually comes out as minus e times v1 plus v2 crossed with b v1 vector plus v2 vector crossed with the magnetic field p that's what i'm getting and divide by 2 here divide by 2 here now this tells me that in this problem mass into acceleration of center of mass is like a charge minus e moving with the velocity of vcm under the effect of the magnetic field that is what i have proved iska matlab main ye bol raha hu ki sawal ki jo equation hai ma 
वो ऐसी है जैसे सेंटर ऑफ मास पे जैसे सेंटर ऑफ मास के ऊपर सम हाइपोथेटिकल एक्चुअली इट इज माइनस ही इट इज माइनस ही बट ऑन द सेंटर ऑफ मास देर इज अ हाइपोथेटिकल माइनस ही इफ आई एज्यूम दैट देर इज अपोथेटिकल माइनस ही मूविंग विथ वेलॉसिटी ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास इन द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड देन द फोर्स दैट दैट पार्टिकल मतलब दिस गाय विल फील उसकी वजह से वॉट एवर मोशन ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास विल कम दैट इज द एक्चुअल मोशन ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास and now life becomes very easy because this tells me that center of mass will move on a on a uniform in a uniform circular motion because center of mass is under the effect of b through this equation qv plus b and b is perpendicular to the plane any time in the actual motion the motion will always be perpendicular to plane of Uh, I mean, it it will be in a plane which is perpendicular to B, because B cannot generate any motion along itself, and the charges ke beech mein jo repulsion or whatever is happening that will also lie in this plane. So I am very clear that center of mass is moving on a uniform circular motion. So answer for the first part is this. What are the results? I mean, what is the omega of center of mass? So we can write all the terms. Uh, remember this m here. represents the mass of electron is don't think like this that i am replacing the mass m m by 2m here minus e minus e by minus 2e here and when i take the ratio it cancels there is no such logic it's only th about the physics of the problem which is telling such a nice wonderful relation that the relation of forces is such that when you add up this cancels and this can happen every time whenever the common force between charge particle will cancel then only this will remain and this becomes similar to that of uh, a, a, a motion of one particle which is kept at the center of mass and because in this case it would have been a uniform circular motion so it will possess uniform circular motion with omega which is alpha b which is e by m from this equation multiplied by b this is the angular velocity of uniform circular motion which center of mass will possess and it will also move on a circle whose radius is rcm this is again interesting it will move on a circle whose radius is rcm and rcm will be equal to vcm vcm by omega cm so you understand omega cm comes out to be E B by M, V C M is required. So in the beginning, if you provide one of them a velocity V and one of them you don't provide any velocity, so V C M in the beginning will be V by two. If you provide one guy zero and the other guy you provide V wherever, then V C M in the beginning is V by two and that cannot change because center of mass is moving in a uniform circular motion. So whatever is the speed of center of mass at t is equal to zero, that will be sustained. so the radius on which center of mass moves and the omega with which center of mass moves that is known to be this is one part of the question still the bigger question remains that what will the particle do now actually this is beautiful center of mass will move on a circle and about the center of mass again they will start moving on circle something of that sort now let's see how can i define the motion of individual particles now so now uh, i'll go back to the combination again now i i am entering the second segment of the problem now again take your particle one general t right uh, somewhere uh, this guy two somewhere and uh, there is this center of mass having position vector rcm rcm vector one thing is very clear with this is origin this is center of mass his path is known one thing is clear with respect to center of mass if like if i know this thing this this vector this vector and this vector will be opposite now so if this position vector is r1 vector and here the position vector is r2 vector 
I am deliberately taking. I am deliberately taking this guy as my, you know, as, as my RCM vector. So you know that these two vectors are equal and opposite. Name name them something. I mean, take this vector as R and this vector as minus R. And remember, they are variable vectors. So I have taken R1 as RCM plus R vector, right? And R vector here comes out as, what is this coming out as? This is coming out as, let me write it properly, R1 minus RCM. And because they are equal masses, so this is simply R1 plus R2 divided by 2. So what comes up is R1 minus R2 divided by 2. So you know with respect to center of mass, his position vector is this. And the other, the, this minus R is the negative. So this is R2 minus R1 by 2. Now, fine. Now let us try to work out the equations in this problem. Now, this vector represents the relative position of 1 with respect to 2, right? That is 1 with respect to center of mass, okay? So, just try to differentiate this term twice. Let's see what will you get. Because already the equations that I have written previously for A1 and A2, just observe, this, these equations will take me there only. Even if I would have subtracted these equations, what I would have got? My equation would have been m a1 vector plus a2 vector. Let's see what I am getting as my RHS term. So just try to subtract these two terms. You will have 2k e square term upon r1 vector minus r2 vector mod q. What is in numerator? I am having r1 minus r2 minus the twice of R1 minus R2, having twice term. So R1 minus R2 term, that is one thing. When I subtracted, I got minus E times V1 vector minus V2 vector crossed with B. Just check this equation first before we move forward. M into A1 minus A2, 2K E square upon R1 minus R2 K mod ka cube, R1 minus R2 minus this term, everything seems to be fine here. Now try to observe this in context of R that I have written. Remember, you are understanding, I am trying to convert my differential equation into everything. Indirectly, I want to analyze this problem from C frame. And C, I know. So I want to study everything in terms of this R which we are writing. And I think we are clear. Here, this these terms are clear. So replace things in terms of R vector, R vector. So R1 minus R2 you replace by twice of R vector, right? This is the position vector with respect to center of mass. A1. This thing, this thing was very clear that R vector come, comes out as R1 minus R2 upon 2. So I'm replacing R1 minus R2 by twice of R. And same thing I want to do hypothetically with, with terms like this term I want to write as twice of some A vector. Stay with this. What is A? I'll explain. And I want to write this term as twice of V vector. I mean, you can write 2 capital A, capital V, whatever. The point is, if you define that R1 minus R2 term, 2 is a constant which can be managed at the last step. So don't bother about uh, the 2 term. Apparently, this equation is similar to the previous equation. Just observe. All these 2 terms will cancel out. And now if you look into this equation, why I have done this? This mathematical format is similar to what I have done 
इन पार्ट ए ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम एक बार सोचते हैं मैंने क्या किया था इन पार्ट ए मास इनटू एक्सेलरेशन ऑफ वन ऑफ देम एनी वन ऑफ देम आई गॉट दीज टर्म्स टू के स्क्वायर आर वन माइनस आर टू मॉड क्यूब बस वहां पर अंतर क्या था इफ यू राइट दिस इक्वेशन एज टू आर देन इवन द डिनोमिनेटर टर्म विल बी रिप्लेस बाय टू आर मॉड क्यूब effectively so basically if i start thinking that even in this problem yeah. this this point is fixed the point which was fixed in the a part that was center of mass if if i start observing this way that this differential equation is same there also in part a just observe while i solve for part a what happened in the problem the term that you have got there that is corresponding to a total distance d which i am now thinking as 2 r if you are convinced with this uh, small r you are confused you use this capital r term capital r term here so that this minus capital r vector i mean i just want to compare this with the d by 2 term of first part and looking into this equation and the similarity with that previous equation this will help me out remember r1 vector minus r2 vector mod i will replace by 2 r vector mod that's what i am trying to say and then the term 2 will obviously cancel out there and effectively this will become 2 r you will get k square i mean you are understanding i think this is a k square twice of r vector effectively and niche uh, clear hai aapko that 2 r vector k mod ka q that's what we are get k square 2 r vector upon 2 r vector ke mod ka q and rest is simple minus e times b cross d term as we have got there right and here also you have got the same m into a term just observe carefully that this equation is absolutely symmetric with a part of the problem the only thing is now i am writing it about the uh, the rotating center of mass so qualitatively his question was very clear his question was what is, what is the motion that those two people will apparently have once i understand this equation i can directly comment on everything as i have commented previously let's say previously my answer on d comes out to be i'll check that result my d whatever d came out to be earlier i'll have a symmetric d here it should be root of that was the cube root of 8 km divided by that constant term that constant term that came there was b square even the d critical that i will have here will be the same so not spending too much time further on it after this the problem is symmetric with a part but still one nice question is left and that is when will the initially moving electron first stop now you have to sketch the trajectory get the idea and then comment on the result so let me let me draw the trajectory in b part of the problem first of all you do one thing for b second part or the third part randomly draw that circular motion for center of mass draw the motion that center of mass will possess some uniform circular motion somewhere center of mass is present right center of mass was moving on a circle whose radius i have calculated for second part and uh, i think that came out to be rcm rcm so use that term and even i calculated the value it came out to be evb by twice of m so let the let it move on that circle with some omega cm with some respective uh, radius 
Now that person is itself center of two points. So I mean, one should be like whatever are these two points, one and two, they are equidistant. So this guy is my center of mass. And he is moving on the circle. Now try to understand one thing: his unique symmetry. I mean, I mean, as center of mass move down and one and two move, you know there is a there is a concept. Literally, there is a factor of half between interchange of position and rotation of omega. Just observe, if one comes at the position of two and two reaches there, in this time instance, because if you gave, let's understand, if you gave velocity to one of them and you did not provide it velocity to the other guy, if one and two, if one and two interchange their position, my purpose is solved. That basically means that I have calculated the first time instance in which whosoever was moving with some speed will come to a state of rest. That is that is the right thing. Now, what we need to find out is in what time will one and two interchange their position. So the point is the center of mass will move on a, cir a circle. The time period of two pi by omega. And as it completes one circle, the two electrons will only swap their position. I mean, if it is moving with omega cm or omega c, by the time he completes one circle, one will reach position two and two will reach position one. Just think about that rod, which is rotating about this point and let it flip. And, and why I am able to make this comment is because of that factor of theta and 2 theta. Center of mass at its center. Remember, I can draw this line in a separate way. There is one line segment like this. There is center here. There is center of mass here. This line, something of this sort. And this one, this two, this center of mass and this center. Again, let me repeat that here, there is no reason why I can say that center lies on this line. This is not circle is independent. The position of the center of the circle and the line connecting one and two, the difference, I, I think you understand that they are not lying on the same line in this problem. Center of mass itself is moving on a circle. It, it, it's like this. If these guys are traveling some theta, then he is traveling theta. I am randomly drawing with respect to horizontal. If this is theta, this angle is theta, this angle is actually 2 theta. He is not, I mean, the reason why I gave that factor of 2 is 2 and 1. I have written their positions. Center of mass is not, it is lying on that line, but that circle on which it is moving is not rotating about a point which is lying on that line. That's what I'm saying. With respect to center of mass, I said that one or two will possess the same motion which I have discussed earlier. That was with respect to center of mass. But this was never stated that center of mass is also moving up about a center which is lying on the line connecting one and two. That was never been said. And that is the whole catch. Even if I don't look into the geometry too much, simply by the concept that center of mass stays uh, moving on a circle and about center of mass, the previous motion happens where I have analyzed that both of them will move on a circle about that point. And that point is again moving on a circle. This is sufficient to say that he is moving on a circle about some point and about this point, both of them are moving on different radii, which are constant with respect to time. So one coming to position of two and two again reaching one is basically telling me that there is a factor of half in what the omega of the circular motion of center of 
mass and the interchange of positions if that thing becomes clear to us then we can understand that by the time it will rotate one thing so like the the answer will be obviously 2 pi by omega of center of mass ya omega c because as it completes one circle as it moves by 2 pi that theta angle becomes pi and one and two positions will become interchanged omega cm expression i have already written in the previous step in fact anything that i am saying here is only on the basis of this equation that i have derived again you can take a moment and think about it what i have said here that two factor is coming because generally if you observe uh, about the fixed point previously both of them are having some thetas and with respect to that also i am having additional theta and the alpha b term is the same so indirectly i am saying that that factor of 2 is coming which is mathematically also proved somebody can say that how come that value is exactly same this equation will help me in telling that the omega that you will calculate from this equation will further help you in writing that data so mathematically if you solve this equation again uh, you should get that result because jo circular motion ho raha hai around the center of mass for that r omega term is actually coming out as v not by 2 i think you understand that v not by 2 helps me in getting a omega center of mass by 2 term aise bhi bol sakta hu so that factor of half is this by virtue of that v not by 2 term so that way also i can predict my theta whichever way you are comfortable or the basic mathematical equation so what, whatever i have said you give thought on each of the points whichever way you are comfortable you can conclude the result and i will also suggest you to solve the further mathematical aspect of this problem i have derived everything all the information lies in the further analysis of this equation you can 